The van has been empty for a week now. Yesterday I restocked on groceries and water, and last week I was celebrating my mom's wedding with her and my family. I kept that private and offline. And today I'm getting back on the road. You'll notice I have a bunch of boxes behind me. It can be really difficult to get mail delivered to you when you live full time on the road. You can do general delivery at USPS, but sometimes it's hard to plan your travels around those deliveries and sometimes they get lost in transit or aren't delivered at the right time. And so since my friends Sarah, Tori, and I knew I'd be dropping by my mom's, they had a bunch of packages dropped here. And so I'm about to drive six and a half hours north to meet up with them. Where is my Santa hat? Because it's basically Christmas. That's convenient if we want to camp here. Yeah. My mom wore this really pretty white jumpsuit. Move. That really, like, she totally rocked it. Almost all of the free coastal camp spots available in Oregon and California are random asphalt parking lots right next to the highway. I was fully expecting to end up at one just like this on my way to Sarah and Tori. It's the price you pay for ocean views. And I was incredibly surprised to find that home this week is a grassy field right next to a dramatic coastal view, with surrounding trees muffling the sound of cars passing. On my first morning there with them, Tori made the three of us breakfast burritos. Look, I just did the most perfect burrito wrap I think I've ever done in my entire life. Wow. I've always considered myself not a burrito wrapper. I am not skilled, but now that's not even a thing anymore. It's out of the window. Yay! I'm 
so happy. <laughs> We just got done with breakfast. Tori did such a good job. The burritos were so good. And now Sarah and Tori have left for a little while to do errands. They have to uh, do some fun work with their composting toilet and go grocery shopping. So I think what I'm gonna do is get out my gouache kit. I've never even used this. I've had it for years. I think the paints are dried up a little bit, but I'm going to attempt to play with them. I am really interested in learning more about gouache. So while they're gone, I'm gonna allow myself to not get as distracted paint what I see and then later I think we're gonna take a hike down to the shoreline which I'm really excited about. I remember buying my gouache palette years ago, thinking I'd immediately take to it, but after I tried just one painting that didn't go very well, I let the paints go dry in favor of my watercolor palette. I had become intimidated, and I had felt like an imposter as an artist, as if I were starting from square one. For years after, I never picked up the gouache palette again, fearing the unknown that came along with trying this new medium. Did you know that psychology suggests that the human brain is more afraid of an unknown outcome than of a bad outcome? New experiences, or new hobbies, or even new places and people fire off an alarm bell in our brains, warning of potential danger. This unfamiliar thing may be unsafe. It sounds silly when you tie this idea back to trying a new medium of art or whatever it is that you've avoided trying because you're bad at it or haven't practiced much. It helps to explain why we might feel anxious at social gatherings with new people or when the van lifer feels scared sleeping alone in their van for the first month on the road until sleeping in quiet, isolated places becomes a familiar routine. This explanation helps me to remember to push past my reptilian fear, this part of us that isn't always tied to our logic. Almost all of the time, challenging the fear of the unknown will inevitably bring a positive outcome. We grow, we learn new things, we gain friends, experiences, and almost always a deeper understanding of ourselves, regardless of whether the thing or place or person ends up being for us. In my case, on this day, I realized that I actually do like gouache, and now I have an entire new world of painting to explore. So, what is it you're afraid of that you should give a try? I finished. You know, I really never paint with gouache, so this was a really fun experiment. It's a different style than I normally do. I feel a lot of times I'm looking at a screen as my reference photo, and there's something so special about being able to look out on something so beautiful and to draw what you see. Anyways, the sun is about to set in like 30 minutes. Sarah and Tori said that they would be here soon, but I just have this feeling that they might not make it in time. So I might head down with Eliza, go for a big walk because she deserves it. We were driving all day yesterday and really haven't done much of a walk today. She's been outside all day, but we could both use a little stretch and I would love to get closer to the ocean. I changed my clothes and put up my painting and they just showed up. Very good timing. You go for a walk? 
You wanna go for a walk? Sisters Rock is one of the newest parks in the Oregon State Park System and remains largely undeveloped and unmarked along Highway 101 in Southern Oregon. It makes my heart happy that places like these are protected yet unaltered, that they are left wild and yet open for us to explore, though we've seen few people walk this path since we arrived here. Tori ended up staying at the vans and Sarah and I are gonna eat some snacks and enjoy the sunset together. And I brought my headlamp just in case it gets dark while we're out here. Oh, to be young and wild and free, to live in a van down by the sea where you have everything you could possibly need at all times, and an unmarked park without amenities or bathrooms is the most perfect backyard in the world. Sometimes van life really is as romantic as it seems. After you've dealt with your composting toilet, that is. <laughs> Right behind me are the hills that I painted yesterday and the place that Sarah and I watched the sunset and you can't even see them at all because of how foggy it is. The foggy weather in these places just make them feel all the more beautiful to me. Which might sound a little bit funny, but it just feels so romantic and moody and I've had the privilege of living in a lot of foggy coastal towns and I just feel very much in my element when I'm in places like these. I find my imagination running wild. The beach here is littered with sea urchins and mussel shells that look like they were fished by humans and eaten right there on the shore or maybe scavenged by birds or quite possibly both. And it makes me think of the Lost Boys from Peter Pan or Kaya from Where the Crawdads Sing, sustaining off of the land and finding a way to live in the most unexpected of places. And I just love that. It makes me feel like a little kid again. I actually collected five of the sea urchins because at this point they would just be left to crumble on the shoreline. And they're so beautiful when dried that I think I'm going to try to do that, though I don't know how, and maybe display some in the van or give some to friends. And I'm really excited to do that. At this point, me and Eliza are going to go back to the van. I have a ton of work to do in the next few days. And I'm gonna tell you guys the big announcement when we get back. We made it home safe and sound, but before I sign off and start editing, I have some really, really exciting news to share with all of you guys. Next year, me, Sarah Yak, and Tori Prince are hosting a trip to Bali and you guys are invited. I honestly, I can't believe that this is happening. I feel like I haven't had much of an opportunity to meet you guys. And now we're gonna get to travel in Bali for a full week filled with magical adventures. Doing a Balinese cooking class. We're going to a temple tour. We're going to a sacred monkey forest. We're gonna see waterfalls. We're gonna see rice fields. And it's just like, 
It's a dream come true. I honestly can't believe it and I am so, so excited. I'm gonna leave a link down in the description box below where you can apply for this trip. It's happening June 1st through June 7th of next year and the link will have a bunch of other important information that you might need to know. If you do have any other questions, you're welcome to leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to answer all of them. I'm just, I'm just like, can't, can't contain it, I'm so excited. But that is all I have for you guys for now. So, as always, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Yeah, you really should this is up for time. We're the true star of the channel, baby.